What's up guys, Cypher Pole 808 back again, and you know what time it is. My favorite time of the week, it's time for a new chapter for One Piece, chapter 1056, let's jump right into it. Alright, so starting right off the bat, we got a color, uh, we got the cover of Shonen Jump, we got Luffy on top, he's eating, we got Deku and everyone, alright, pretty cool, we got Asta from Black Clover, can't wait to get back into that. And then we got uh, another little short comic with Ulti in it, get back to that later. But there we go. All right. Chapter 1056, Cross Guild. And then let's see the cover story. Looks like we got, oh, there he is, the man himself, Katakuri, coming back with Oven right there. Looks like they're taking on the Germa siblings. Looks like a pretty epic battle. It says Germa Double Sixes Cold Blooded Voyage, Volume 15. Katakuri and Oven spring into action. All right. So pretty cool. I wonder if we'll get to see any of that animated, maybe kind of like a flashback or something. But. Good to see my boy Katakuri still up and about. Let's jump right into this chapter. All right, so if you guys remember at the end of last chapter, we had that craziness with, you know, Shang sending his hockey and, you know, basically stopping Ryo Kugyu in his tracks. And then we saw Luffy and them kind of just looking on, you know, watching everything unfold, you know, waiting to see if they needed to move. And of course they didn't. Um, you know, we had that revelation about the whole opening of Wano. So let's see what we're gonna get this time. All right, the flower capital after the festivities. And says, uh, the aftermath of Ryo Kyugyu's assault. All right, so, okay, looks like Raizo and Shinobu might be down a little bit. What terrifying sorcery, all right. So we see the flower capital and we hear, you know, you kind of hear everyone yelling for Shinobu and Raizo. So, you know, Raizo was really going in against Ryo Kyugyu. All right, oh, damn. Okay, so right off the bat, we're seeing Raizo and he's like, all just sucked dry right there. It looks like, I mean, I guess that vine or whatever that real Q you hit him with just sucked all the moisture or vitality out of him. And he's like, we may find it hard to admit, but that man had a point. Kaido's presence was the only thing kind of keeping people at bay. All right, and he goes over and you see Shinobu over there. Uh, and you see, um, I forget what the mink, um, you know, Chopper's girlfriend's over there working on her. And then they're like, yeah, he really was a tremendous deterrent. All right, and what do we got next? All right, so Kinemon, he's got, you know, he's just kind of looking down. Looks like he's about to be begging forgiveness. Yep. He's like, I should not have been in Curry when all this happened. All right, so he's over there. You know, he's prostrating himself before his friends, before the other scabbards. He's like, I was completely oblivious. And then everyone looking around. They're like, ah, don't sweat it. We were able to avoid more casualty thanks to Momo's uh, new power. You know, him being able to kind of control that big dragon. Him trying to use his Boro Brett. And they're, oh, we see, um, they're asking about Suru, you know, Suru, his wife, who we, uh, in the midst of the battle, we thought was dead, but, you know, you come to find out she's not, so that's pretty awesome. All right, it's like, uh, well, Okabori Town itself was reduced to ashes, and Suru suffered a nasty burn to the face, but I am just thankful that she managed to survive. Oh, if it isn't Osuru-san, I hear Kinsan finally came home. Yes, but he had to return to the capital. All right, and then we see that little old granny that we kind of seen throughout the story. And he's like, uh, you help from the capital yourself. Any plans to move back? And then we see Sue over there. She's got like a bandage over her eyes. She's like, yeah, I always want to be at his side, you know? So she's been separated from her husband for 20 years and now she's finally able to, you know, be by his side. <laughs> and then literally in the next panel, we see Kimon, he got this stupid old grin on his face right there. And he's like, wow, even after 20 years, he's all just, he's all love struck right there. All right. And then we see Inurashi, he's all snapping. He's like, this ain't puppy love, damn it. <laughs> and you see Kiko over there, you know, Kiko, who was um, at the beginning when we first met Kiko, she was actually working for Suru, kind of undercover, but, you know, Suru recognized her. And then he's like, oh, I wish I was popular. And Rizal's over there, he's like, I'll suck he's like, I wish I was popular. Ooh, looks like I lost my bulb. All right. And then we're like, okay, we got the flower capital. And then it looks like, you know, something big is going on in the flower capital. And they're like, wait, ruler? No way, I can't possibly take charge. All right, so this sounds like it's gotta be Momo, you know, having everyone tell him that he's like in charge. Oh, wait, no. Oh, what? Is Carrot about to become like the head honcho? And it says, uh, okay, we got Neko and Inu in there, you know, kind of sitting down and they got Carrot before them right there. 
And they're like, oh, uh, we decided we have to stay in Wano to serve as the Kozuki returners and, uh, you know, kind of protect Momo and, you know, get him going now that he's going to become the Shogun. And he says, uh, you've grown very dependable after your adventures with Luffy and the others. You definitely got what it takes to lead the next generation. Like, what the hell? Carrot's about to lead the Minx? Like, are you serious? Um, I mean, I guess that's kind of good. Maybe that's kind of how we're going to ease her in as, like, a, you know, co or a captain of one of the Straw Hat Grand Fleet ships that we still haven't seen. Because, you know, we can't be getting rid of Carrot. But some of the others are way stronger. So Kara's like, you know, trying to object right now. She's like, wait, but but there's others that are stronger than me. And then it's like, we see, okay, we see Cecilian right there. You know, I don't know if this is just her thinking of him. And then no, no, I say, okay, it says, true enough. That's why you can trust us to protect the country for you. All right, so Cecilian and them are like, you know, honoring Neko and Inu's choice. And they're like, don't worry, Kara, we're going to help you protect it. And then we got Wanda. Hell yeah, Wanda's got his, got his girls back right there. I'll be by your side too, Carrot. The Dukes chose wisely. Like, what? Carrot is in charge of the Minx right now? Like, Pedro's will lives on in you more than it does anyone else. And when she's like, huh, Pedro? And, you know, you see all the Minx kind of in the, in the capital right there. And it says, uh, we leave Zoe to you youngsters. Oh, all right. And we know that Zoe is going to have to come back or have, you know, possibly something to do with the opening of Wano because Zunisha was in communication with Momo uh, and Momo was like, no, I'm not going to choose to open the borders right now. But, you know, as we found out last chapter, uh, Wano is basically submerged or old Wano is submerged because of those walls that went up all the way around it. So I'm guessing that Zunisha is kind of the way in which to uh, break those walls down. I mean, they always do got Luffy, I guess. Um, you know, they don't have Whitebeard's fruit, which would have been perfect, you know, the Guru Guru no me to break it, but what do you guys think? I'm pretty sure that's going to kind of be one of the roles that Zunisha plays is being able to break down this. So I guess now that Carrot's going to be in charge of the Minx and on Zunisha, is it going to be kind of like, it'd be cool if it was kind of Carrot shipped, quote unquote, kind of. Uh, you know, captain would be Zunisha. That'd be pretty epic. Like, I don't know if you guys play Treasure Cruise, but Zunisha is actually a ship in Treasure Cruise. So it'd be kind of cool. Carrot is the captain of Zunisha. But all right, anyway, let's go, let's go. And then, oh, okay, so uh, Sukuyaki is uh, revealing that he's alive. He's like, you're our grandpa? Yes, Odin was my son. Oh, okay, so is he going to reveal all this to Momo and Hiori? You know, the stuff that he was showing to Law and Robin. And then what do we get? Okay, we see Momo just like doesn't even care. He's just so happy to see him. He's like, sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm in your debt. And he's like, you truly are a spinning image of your father, Momonosuke. And then okay, so we see uh, Momo and Hiori. They got like tears in their eyes, and it's like after losing our parents, it means a lot to find out that we still have some family. All right, so yeah, I guess that's true. You know, they thought they were the only ones left in the world from the Kozuki clan. And that it was just going to be them and, you know, the remnants of the scabbards kind of rebuilding Wano. But now they come to find out, like, no, your blood grandfather's still alive. You know, the man who used to be Shogun. So he's got a whole just world of experience to be able to help Momo and Hiori. So that's pretty epic. And then even the scabbards, are they going to recognize him? All right, so it says, uh, we see Sukiyaki. He's like, so I take it the rest of you really did know about me. And they're like, wearing a Tengu mask outside of a festival is odd. So we knew you were no ordinary swordsmith, all right? So this is um, Kawamatsu. He's like, oh, we, you know, we noticed you were wearing that mask. So we knew something was up. We didn't think it was our place to expose you. All right, so they're all just kind of like, oh, yeah, we knew it. Forgive me for putting you in that position. But you see in the background, you see Kinemon, he's got dot, dot, dot. And then he's like, wait, what the hell? He was Tsukuyaki this whole time? Like, are you serious? <laughs> so, yet again, you know, Kinemon, supposed to be the leader, supposed to be, you know, the one up on everything, kind of like how the whole plan was. It all kind of worked out because Kinemon had no clue, like, he was completely deceived. And kind of same thing, like, he had no clue this is Tsukuyaki. All right, what do we got? Okay, so Tsukuyaki's gonna tell us something. He's like, uh, there may be some things I can shed light on. That's all an old uh, codger like me is good for anyway. When that's done, I implore you to let me live anonymously along, uh, among the people in this new era you have ushered in. All right, so he doesn't even, you know, he's a remnant of 
old Wano, or not ancient Wano, but, you know, the Wano before Kaido took over. So he's like, you know what? This is a new generation, a new dawn. Like, I'll assist you, but then let me kind of fade into the background. Don't let me become, you know, a centerpiece to steal the light. And he's like, absolutely, just knowing you're alive is a great comfort to us. All right, so Kinemani is just, like, stoked that he's alive. And then, okay, we see Frankie next panel. We see, you know, pans out, and he's like, wait, what? Pluton's in this country? All right, so, you know, Frankie's going to want to know or have something to do with it. Check it out, you know, because I don't care that he burned those blueprints. As long as he had those blueprints, I'm sure he has them, like, memorized in his brain. All right, and then we see uh, Robin. And she's like, yes, I didn't get the chance to see it myself, but there's no mistaking it. And Frankie, he's kind of just like, he's got some sweats going down. He's like, oh, so it really exists. So I'm guessing that he really does remember the plans and kind of knows or has some understanding of the, the magnitude of devastation that this uh, ship could bring about. What do you guys think? All right, and then, okay, we're getting back. We got Luffy over here. Looks like everyone's kind of partying, or not partying, but kind of hanging out, having a meal, kind of discussing some things. And then Luffy's like, hey, didn't you burn the blueprints anyways, Frankie? Yeah, Pluton is an ancient weapon named after God. You want it, Luffy? He's like, nah, I'm good. I thought you'd say that still. I can't help but wonder. Why would Odin want to unleash it? So I'm guessing that maybe this uh, unleashing of the ancient weapon is kind of going to be the only way to, you know, um, defeat Imusama and the world government and the Gorosei, or it's going to have something to do with that. But of course, Luffy doesn't have any real interest in doing that. He just wants to be free and have a good time and be the Pirate King. But maybe as fulfilling his role as Joy Boy and, you know, the new Joy Boy incarnate, you guys think he's going to have to command these um, ancient weapons? You know, he's already kind of got Shirohoshi on lock. Uh, we're discovering Pluton right now. And then depending if the theories are correct about Uranus... You know, some people think Momo controlling um, Zo could be it. I'm not really sure if I'm on board with that anymore. But, you know, we still haven't confirmed what that third uh, ancient weapon is. And then, oh, oh, damn. Okay. Look at this. Is that Shinobu right there? It says, come again. And then we see, um, what's her, her name? Tomo's right there. Did you say that mature ladies are alluring ancient weapons? And then Frankie's like, who the hell are you? And then she's like, oh, it's me, Shinobu. And they're like, probably like, wait, what the hell? So she probably, wait, how the hell did she do that? Oh, no, because he sucked the age out of her, maybe? I'm nothing but skin and bones after that accident. And then Sanji's eyes are, like, bulging out his little hard eyeballs. He's like, that's some glow up. And Tom over there, all right, she's looking like a little bewitching Kunoichi. So I'm really guessing, come on, Luffy, please take her. Fulfill Ace's promise to her, like, oh, no, no. He says, uh, Anaki, Anaki, I'm going to be Shinobu's apprentice. Think I can get strong enough to join your crew next time we meet? And, oh, okay, so setting it up for for future, another brother's promise. Hmm. All right, and we see Nami running over there. She's like, oh, my God, you look so adorable. And Luffy's like, yeah, sure, if you keep up your uh, ninjutsu training. And then, okay, what do we got? Oh, Caribou, you shifty, shady, sl oh, I hate Caribou. He just, no matter how much and how they try to introduce him, like, he just always seems shifty and shady. First Poseidon, now this. There's a certain someone who'd love to hear about this. Oh, is he going to rat him out to Blackbeard or something? Or who is he going to rat him out to? All right, and then we see, okay, so flash forward a few days later, we're in the flower capital. We see everyone kind of got big smiles in the face, going about their business as usual. All right, and what do we got next? Okay, we're heading over to Momo, and it says, uh, looks like we've got the restoration plans finished for all the various villages. The necessary funds have also been calculated. And then we see Momo kind of just looking down at it. All right, what's going on? He doesn't look quite pleased and says, Shogun, Shogun-sama. And we just see him kind of walking away. He's got this real stern look on his face. All right, what do you guys think's up with him? You think he's kind of weighing out the potential of opening up the borders versus not opening the borders? Or 
uh, you know, dealing with Pluton. What do you guys think is on his mind that's making him have this, you know, stoic look on his face right now? And, okay, wait, never mind. <laughs> he, he just looks all happy now. He's like, hey, Zoro, can you teach me some sword? Uh, and then it just stops. And then they're gone. Luffy and Zoro are, they're just gone. The whole crew, they're gone. He's like, huh? One was like, hey, was probably just like looking around like, wait, what the hell? Where'd they go? And then all of a sudden they're like, he starts screaming after. He's like, Nami, Chopper, who's up? Where is everyone? And he's just running around. He's checking. He's like, are you in there? No, where, where are you at? Where are you at? All right, he's checking, he's checking inside the bath. Yamato's not there. That's a good sign for Yamato joining the crew. He's like, where is everyone? All right, and then finally, okay, we run into Hiori right there. Have you seen Luffy and the gang? And I'm guessing that's Otoko with her. Yep. All right. And then she's just like, oh, they all left everywhere. Or they all left earlier. Everyone came to uh, say farewell this morning. And then he's just like, wait, what? But no one said anything to me. Like, they didn't come say goodbye to me. Are you serious? And then what do we say? Okay, we see Momo and Kinemon getting into it in the next panel. And then he's like, Kinemon, Luffy and the rest. I just figured, found out myself. So both of them are like, wait. What? They didn't come and say goodbye to us? They said their goodbyes to Dendro and the others. Why leave us out? Oh, man. All right, what the... Okay, what the hell? All right, we're going back to Tokage Port in Udon. All right, so we got all three ships. We got, you know, the Polar Tang. We got uh, the Thousand Sunny. And then I can't remember what kid ship's name is. But all right, what do we got? It says, just pick a different day to leave Straw Hat. Our alliance has run its course. We're rivals again. All right, so Kaido has been taken down. Doflamingo's been taken down. I guess law is true. Technically speaking, their alliance with the Straw Hats is over. But, oh, I forgot to check this last time. Someone let me know in the comments. How many road poneglyphs does, or load poneglyphs, whatever you want to call them, how many does law have? He's got the one at Zoe. He knows about the one here. But... I don't believe he has a copy of the one from Big Mom. I could be wrong. I need to double check that, but I feel like he doesn't. All right. And then, okay, we see Luffy. And he's like, no way. We decided to set sail today. And then uh, Kid's like, all right, well, let's at least pick some different routes, damn it. All right, what do we got? The Middle East. The Middle. The Northeast. All right, we just see Luffy, Law, and Kid just arguing over. Um, they're looking at one of the... Um, things and we see Beppo in the background looks like they're kind of doing some stuff and it says uh, the islands are log poses locked onto are in three different directions north east east and southeast pick one all right and then we're getting this little map over here and it says the calm belt and then we're seeing direction to the three islands all right so is which island they go to is that really going to have a key and maybe kind of setting up Finding the next road poneglyph or the next, uh, is one of them going to be Elbaf? You know, there's just so many possibilities. And then we see Law and Kid, they're like, ah, what? He's like, uh, did you two just randomly pick the middle one? How childish. And they're like, no, I lost the draw. Sorry, guys. Luffy's all mad. He's like, no, damn it, I lost it. It looks like they drew lots. All right. Who cares? They're all... Usopp's over there. He's like, hey, shut up. They're all dangerous. doesn't matter. All right, he's yelling at Luffy. Even though Luffy's a captain, he's still screaming. He's like, hey, come help us, damn it. All right. I'm the emperor. I should be at the best at drawing lots. So Luffy's like, hey, hey, I'm the emperor of the sea, okay? Damn it, you two are just little peons. <laughs> and they're like, wait, what, what was that, Straw Hat? All right. You cocky emperors are an eyesore. But the one that pisses me off the most is this guy. Oh, is he gonna... Is he gonna slam down Shanks' wanted poster? Or is it gonna be Blackbeard's wanted poster? Because we've already taken down Big Mom. We've taken down Kaido. We knew that they were trying to go after Shanks. And so far, we haven't really seen anyone move against Blackbeard. So let's see who it is. But Buggy, how could I forget the jester himself? Buggy the clown, the bombastic clown. Wait a minute, what is this? Looks like he got uh, a little step up in his crew. He got Mihawk. He's got Crocodile. Okay. Cross Guild. All right, so did Buggy kind of unite all the ex-Shishibukai to kind of, you know, 
band together against the world government since they kind of got screwed over right there. Now that would make sense as to how he quote unquote rose to power. He's got guys like Hawkeye and Crocodile on his team. Like those are some serious heavy hitters right there. Even Luffy's like, wait, what the hell? Crocodile, Hawkeye? They're working under Buggy. <laughs> and then Zoro just kind of looking on. He's like, I can't even imagine Hawkeye working under that idiot. All right, what the hell is going on? If he's capable of commanding men like this, then he's definitely a worthy new emperor. All right, so I'm wondering if it's kind of like how, I'm guessing it's like how Impel Down was. They were just kind of around and Buggy is taking the credit for them and saying that he's in charge of them. Trust me, he's just a moron. <laughs> now that, for Luffy to straight up just be like, he's a moron. <laughs> That's pretty bad. All right. Whatever it wants, it seems this cross guild of his is issuing bounties on Marines. Oh, okay. They coming out hard. All right. Now those Navy dogs have to watch their backs too. The hunters have become the hunted. All right. I can kind of see that, you know, with Hawkeye, like going out, maybe being bored, hunting some people. And it says, sounds like the world really changed while we were in this isolated country. Yep, so Shishibukai straight up just got abolished. Um, I don't even know if they know, or I guess they do know about uh, Cobra being killed, Sabo being the Flame Emperor. Um, yeah, it's just going crazy. Their bounties, Luffy being considered the new Emperor, Buggy being the new Emperor with his uh, Mihawk and Crocodile. Like, shit's going crazy right now. All right, let's see. And then we see Kid. He's like, everyone done whining about their routes, right? Once we leave Wano, it's every man for himself. I don't want to hear any excuses. All right, so we're going to get like a battle straight out of leaving Wano between uh, our top three rookies right here. And then what do we got right there? Pat! Is that a V-Ray card? I'm guessing maybe. Is that a V-Ray card? He's like, what the hell is this, Trafalgar? Oh, no! This man is coming out hard. He's like, it's a copy of the Lone Poneglyph. You earned it too, so Law giving a copy of the Poneglyph to Kid, like, okay. He don't want this thing easy. He want to earn it the right way. Like, he wants to be the top dog. It wouldn't be sporting to keep it from you. So Kaido did have one. It's like the one we forced uh, that Big Mom. Come okay, so they do have the one. Um, well, Kid Dam have the one from Big Mom, but they don't have the one on Zoe. And he says, Phew. okay, we see Killer, and he's looking at it, and he's like, if we want to stay ahead in the scramble for the One Piece, we ought to get serious about that guy. You want to go after the man marked by flames, but we've got no leads. <coughs> All right. And it says the phrasing here is unique and can imply a burn or a scar shaped like fire. All right. Why marked by flames? So the only two people we know marked by flames or some type of scar on their face that's Shanks and Sabo. Shanks uses, or Shanks has a scar on his face, but Sabo's got the flames and the scar. And then Luffy's like, huh? Marked by flames, what are you talking about? All right, so yeah, he's, he's scratched right there. And then we see Law, he kind of, even uh, Robin's looking on. And then we see Kid, and he's like, oh, you don't know? I guess we're a step ahead of you. And Luffy's like, come on, spill it out already. And then we see, okay, we're going back to the flower capital, so maybe Momo's still looking for people. Are you gone too, Yamato? Not yet, Momonosuke. Uh, on the roof like usual, all right, so uh, Yamato hasn't quite left yet. He's like, oh, Yamato's like, yeah, I made up my mind. I'm about to head over to Luffy and the gang right now. All right, so Yamato coming to join the crew. It's finally time for me to live like Odin did. Heroic and free him. She just got this big old smile on her face. All right. I don't think there's going to be anything to stop her from joining the crew. Um, but let's let's go back. Hold on, guys. What are, you, what are you guys feeling about this last panel? Or not the last panel, but this whole thing with, uh, with Law and Shanks. Or not Shanks, but I guess possibly Shanks or Sabo. Who are they targeting? Who is Kid going after? Is he referring to Shanks? Is he referring to Sabo? I would assume Sabo, kind of based on that whole, oh, you don't know, thing that he gave Luffy, like, oh, I guess you haven't heard about him being named the Flame Emperor and him killing, uh, you know, Nefertari Cobra. So I'm wondering why 
Law and Robin have that look on their face, or maybe because Law remembers that uh, Sabo helped them out, so he doesn't want to target him. I don't know. There's a lot of different directions. I think, you know, definitely Oda left this up to be kind of ambiguous and kind of, you know, get us going and see, get the community kind of, who you guys think he's talking about? Is he talking about Shanks or is he talking about Sabo? But all in all, man, that was a good chapter. I enjoyed it. Introduced, you know, kind of a good way to end Wano. Kind of setting up at least the movement where we're going from here. Not necessarily the specific location or what that location is, but um, we see, you know, the race for uh, Pirate King, you know, kind of really is boiling down, at least for the rookies, to Law, Luffy, and Kid. Everyone else, I feel, is kind of out, at least from the supernova side of the house. But then we see, you know, we got Shanks moving towards it. You know, Blackbeard's going to be around. Um, what's up with Buggy? Buggy's all about that treasure, but we've never really seen him go after the One Piece or say that he wants to go after the One Piece. So, uh, yeah, man, I don't know. That was a good chapter. Um, let me know what you guys thought down in the comments. If I miss anything, please let me know. Uh, other than that, if you guys aren't already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. But other than that, have a wonderful day.